If what I do now is uh, just take those lines out from there and see what uh, Kilpatrick's method would look like if we uh, envisage something more like a real project on there, he would say, let's take a couple of indicators here. And those indicators would be the 10% float. That is, if we ordered all the activities in a list in ascending order from zero float up to the maximum float, all those activities, and then we'd sort them out and go down that list and find the first decile. That means 10% of the way down, we'd look at the float at that point. We'd also do that for the fifth decile, the 50% point, and do it for the 90% point. And we'd use those as bands or indicators. But the power of the method is that you could select different bands if you wanted to, and you could look in at milestones. You could look at packages of work, for example, and uh, home in on them, so intermediate goals on the project. So let's say we looked at uh, that line for the near critical path, we'd say we'd call that F1, and we'd draw that line along here to hit our zero point there. We'd do that again for F2, and again for well, I've called it F2, and I really should have called it F5, because it's the fifth decile. That would be the ninth decile. So that's the ordered list. What you find in reality when you look at the float, and if we take any particular data point and say, let's track what the float might have been up to that point, let's call it actual time expended, then that float would have come something like this. It wouldn't have been decaying easily, and let's say this project is running late. We might find something like this happening. And we can interpret those things reasonably easily. The position we got to is that this project currently is running late on the urgent work and the work of medium urgency but on the work that's not urgent at all, which has got the maximum float, it seems to be running a little bit early.